Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Acts 24 ends with the Apostle Paul stuck in prison. After having a hearing before the governor Felix and some conversations that he has personally with Felix over time, eventually Paul just gets stuck in prison. Felix leaves him there kind of to make a, uh, to do the Jews a favor and he's just stuck in limbo. No sentence given, and no uh, verdict placed, whether for him or against him. He's just stuck, stuck there in prison. And the Apostle Paul spent a lot of his time in prison. Uh, it's believed that he spent approximately six years of his ministry in prison, uh, which would make up uh, probably a little less than one fifth of his whole ministry time Sp sent, or uh, I'm sorry, spent stuck in a prison cell somewhere. And some might say, well, that seems like a waste of time. Why would the Lord allow the Apostle Paul to have six years of his precious time eaten up, just stuck in some prison cell or st stuck, detained in some way? And some have speculated that perhaps it was because that was the only way to keep Paul still. <laughs> he was so busy, so energized, so diligent. Uh, the only way to really keep him from moving around and being busy was to throw him into a prison cell. And whether that's the case or not, we don't know. But we do know that the Apostle Paul made the best of the opportunity that he had while in prison. Uh, we know from his writings and from his story that he spent time sharing the gospel when he was in prison, led people to Christ. Uh, he also wrote very cherished letters that we have even today while in prison. Matter of fact, some of the most cherished writings of Paul were done while he was imprisoned. And the Apostle Paul was able to reflect on things and able to draw close to the Lord and come to the realization of certain truths while in prison. So his time in prison was actually very beneficial to not only the Apostle Paul himself, but to the church in general. And as we think about that, in our own lives, we could say, you know, there are times in our lives where we are imprisoned. Now, it might be that we are actually physically imprisoned for our faith. That's definitely something that happens uh, around the world, people being imprisoned for their faith. But there are other ways we could be imprisoned as well. We might be imprisoned in a, hot, uh, in a hospital bed, or we might be stuck in our house because of some uh, injury, physical injury that we've gotten or some type of illness or sickness that we have and, and we're quarantined to our house or something like that and we're in prison we're stuck we're not able to move about and and do ministry as we used to do before maybe it's a mental prison that we're in maybe it's because we are grieving the loss of a loved one or because we've encountered some type of uh, tragedy in our lives that has caused us to um, not be able to do life as easily as we used to before. Uh, it could be a, a whole different way, a whole array of different ways in which we are imprisoned and not able to really minister as we used to. Um, but we find ourselves like that. And perhaps we can relate to the Apostle Paul uh, as we read about him being in prison for two years. Uh, I'm sure there's some Christians who have been in prison for two years five years, 10 years, maybe several decades, um, just stuck in a, a, either a physical uh, barrier with a physical barrier or a mental barrier, something like that. And we should be inspired by the Apostle Paul when we think about his time in prison. For one, we should be inspired because what it shows is that God's plan and purpose can still be done even though we might be stuck, even though we might be in, quote unquote in prison somewhere. That God can still work through us. God can still accomplish his plan and purpose. Maybe us being uh, detained in a particular situation might be something that will open the door later on. Or we'll find here the Apostle Paul being in prison for these two, two plus years uh, eventually opens the door for him to go to Rome and testify about Christ there. Now, we just don't know what God is working out in those particular situations. But what we can do is... Not get down, not get despondent, not check out, but to say, you know what, I may not be able to do as much as I used to do before, but may, perhaps I can do something. 
Um, the Apostle Paul wrote letters. Maybe I can write a letter. Uh, maybe I can send an email. Maybe I can post something on social media that will encourage others. Maybe I can make a phone call. Um, just because we might be physically detained or mentally detained doesn't necessarily mean we can't do anything. And what we should do is still say, you know what, I still want to do something. I still want to do something for the kingdom. And we just don't know what that what type of impact that something might have uh, as we minister to others. Now, if nothing else, we can pray. Uh, we should pray no matter what, but um, it might be that we might be in such uh, stuck in such a state that that's all we can do is pray. And and that's definitely a very important thing to be diligent in prayer, to 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 uh, get on our knees and bow to the Lord and pray to Him and pray for others. You know, just find uh, something for us to do, something we can do and get engaged in. Uh, it might help us to not feel quite so imprisoned that we're actually are able to at least do something and have uh, control at least over some aspect of our lives, and it might even help us emotionally um, in that way. So if we find ourselves in prison, for whatever reason, for however long, let's be encouraged by the Apostle Paul. Let's see God's plan and purpose in it, but let's also do what we can to still serve in the kingdom, if possible, and to try to help in the furtherance of the kingdom of God here on the earth. And so with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.